Cooler Master are well known for their range of cases and cooling solutions. They've also produced some pretty solid peripherals and today I'm going to be checking out their latest lightweight gaming mouse, the MM712. I've been using this mouse as my daily driver for a little while now, for the past couple of weeks, so stick around to find out if I think this thing's any good. Hey guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. As I mentioned just now, today we'll be taking a look at the MM712 gaming mouse from Cooler Master. It's a lightweight wireless peripheral that is aimed mainly at FPS and MOBA gamers. Now the MM712 has a retail price of 60 quid, which is pretty good when you compare it to some of the more recent releases in the gaming mouse world. Now with advertised specs like up to 80 hours battery life, sub 59 grams in weight, pure PTFE feet and wireless connectivity, if the MM712 can deliver great performance, especially when you consider that price point, then we could be looking at a very decent choice for your daily mouse. Let's take a look at it in a bit more detail and find out if that's the case. The box for the MM712 is tiny and it contains hardly any plastic at all, which I know some of you going on previous comments and like me will really appreciate. The only bits of plastic that I found were the bags that the mouse and the included grip tape are kept inside. In the box you'll find the mouse itself of course, a soft weave USB-A to USB-C cable that's just shy of two meters long, a USB-A to C converter, the tiny 2.4 GHz wireless adapter, which can be found inside the bottom of the mouse itself. You'll find that grip tape that I mentioned a second ago. And then finally, you've got a leaflet which got some brief information on how to set the mouse up and on the manufacturer warranty, which is two years. So looking at the design of the MM712, and it was immediately obvious to me when I got it out of the box that this is quite a small mouse. Now, although Cooler Master has labelled this mouse as having a right-handed design, I'm not sure how that extends past them just placing the side buttons on the left-hand side of the mouse. The MM712 has a symmetrical design, which feels okay under the hand, but I wouldn't say it has been tailored for right-handed gamers by any means. I would have liked to have seen a bit of a more ergonomic design used as it feels like an ambidextrous mouse if I'm honest. The left click and right click are independent from the main plastic body of the mouse, just like on the much more expensive Death Adder V3 Pro, which is nice to see at this price point. The white design that I was sent out for review, sitting right in front of me, looks really good in my opinion. The grey accented wheel and side buttons add a nice bit of contrast to the design. There is a single RGB zone in the shape of Cooler Master's Halo logo, which can be customised in the Master Plus software, which we'll look at in more detail later on in the video. Now, one of the main selling points of the MM712 is the weight. It's 59 grams, and this is without any holes or cutouts in the main body of the mouse, which is nice because then there's no need to worry about dust or Dorito crumbs getting inside the mouse things will stay clean inside and I prefer this look. It's a personal preference thing. You may prefer a honeycomb design mouse, but I prefer a solid bodied mouse. The left and right click buttons feel really good on this mouse. They're quite responsive. Now, Cooler Master went with optical switches instead of mechanical ones. And as I mentioned back in my review of the Razer Huntsman Mini Analog, optical switches help to reduce debounce delay, which in turn keeps the latency in the actuation as low as possible. In the real world, you'd have to be superhuman to be able to tell the difference between sub one millisecond and then four or five milliseconds. But from my use of the mouse for gaming, the clicks do feel great and they register really quickly. I've not experienced any issues with the mouse failing to detect my inputs at any point during my testing. And now I've got a touch on the mouse wheel. It did disappoint me a little bit, if I'm honest. It feels soft and spongy. It clicks down really easily when you push it to the right. 
but then not when you push it to the left. And this could cause accidental wheel clicks if you get a bit rough when you're scrolling. The middle mouse click, the mouse three button, does feel okay though, but it's let down a bit by the, the scroll feeling a little bit on the poor side. The side buttons have a fair bit of tactility to them and they do have a satisfying click when you press them. I found that nice. The side buttons feel really good quality. So flipping the mouse over on the bottom, you'll find buttons relating to changing the DPI on the fly and connecting the MM712 to your computer. There's a slider to select between 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth, and then wired modes. And then there's a small pairing button to be used when connecting via Bluetooth. The buttons on the bottom are plastic. They, they don't feel the greatest, they feel kind of cheap, but they are, they're plastic and they're finished in the same grey colour found on the side buttons and the mouse wheel. There is also a small storage cut out for storing the wireless dongle, which is nice to see because it is tiny and it would be quite easy to lose it. Overall, the button's are decent. The quality has been put into the mouse where it matters in the left and right click. It's let down a little bit by the scroll wheel, which could be a bit better, but overall, it's an okay experience using this mouse and the clicks feel nice and tactile. Here's a sound test so you can hear what each of the buttons sounds like. The build quality of the body of the MM712 is okay for a mouse at this price point. There's a tiny bit of flex when you squeeze the sides, but it's not something that I noticed when I was using the mouse as it was intended for gaming. It's only when I picked it up and tried to squeeze it that I felt that flex. The buttons could be a little bit better, and the plastic used does feel a little bit cheap, but they do help keep the weight down and they work, so I haven't got any major concerns, really. The sensor inside the MM712 is the Pixar PAW3370 which has got a max DPI setting of 19,000. Now specs on the sensor itself, like the acceleration and the IPS, were not included in the information sent over to me by Cooler Master, but from what I can see online, it looks to have an acceleration limit of 50G and then an IPS capability of 400. These two specs are just how much force and distance the mouse can take when accelerating before losing track of any movement. These figures aren't as high as some of the mice on the market, but they are enough to keep up with the craziest of movements in games. Plus, we have to keep the price in mind. So as far as the sensor goes, it's all good, and from my experience, the MM712 feels fast, fluid, and smooth, and it's never let me down at all. The polling rate is set at 1000 Hz, which is kind of the standard now, and it's responsive enough to serve all sorts of game as well, not just FPS and MOBA gamers like I mentioned at the start of the video. Sure, there are options out there which can poll much higher, but be honest, can you really tell the difference? Now, as I touched on briefly earlier in the video, the MM712 offers three methods of connecting it to your PC. So it's 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth, and then wired using the included USB cable. And this is becoming pretty standard practice for wireless gaming mice and keyboards to be fair across the board now and I like that we have the options available should we need them. I tend to stick to 2.4 GHz wireless but the others are there if you ever want to use them. Now that 2.4 GHz wireless mode has worked flawlessly for me during my testing and I haven't experienced any issues with connection drops or stuttering at all. Bluetooth works. It's still not something I'd ever recommend for gaming but it'll do if you're in a pinch and you need to quickly connect it to a laptop, for example. There is a lot more input lag when using Bluetooth, but this isn't something that's exclusive to this mouse. That's just how Bluetooth is. It's only ever a last resort for me with peripherals. Then finally, there's the option of using the mouse with the included Softweave USB cable, which is how you're gonna charge it when the battery runs out anyway. The MM712 performs just the same as when on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection when you use it in this mode. At least I couldn't tell a difference. Speaking of charging, that leads me nicely on to talking about the battery life. Now, Cooler Master claimed that the battery life for the MM712 is up to 181 hours when using Bluetooth and up to 80 hours when using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless. But there's a catch. This is with the RGB turned off. 
but the mouse has RGB on by default when you plug it in or when you set it up and connect it. So most people will more than likely leave it turned on. And Cooler Master don't include any claims for the battery life with the RGB turned on. I find that a little bit strange. Now I've had the RGB turned on the entire time that I've been testing the MM712 and I've found the battery life to be okay. I'm on my computer almost all day, every day, and I've had to charge it roughly twice in a week. It puts it, if I had to put a figure on it, I haven't measured it exactly, but I would say you'd get about 40 to 50 hours with the RGB turned on when you talk about real world usage. Now another thing I found strange relating to the battery and the charge level is that there's nowhere to see the exact percentage of the battery remaining that I could find anyway. There was just a vague battery bar inside the Master Plus software, which we'll talk about in more detail in a minute. Now I've played a lot of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer with the MM712, and it has performed really well. It coped with the fast paced gameplay, and it's never had me questioning whether it's keeping up with a bang average gamer like myself. The way it feels took me a bit to get used to as it's really small, and if I'm honest, I'm still not a fan of how it feels after using it for a few weeks. I just prefer a bigger mouse. It's a personal preference thing. And someone with smaller hands or a claw style grip may get on really well with it though. The software that accompanies the MM712 is Cooler Master's Master Plus, and in general, it's all right. The user interface is relatively simple to control with connected devices being listed on the left-hand side and then the options for the selected device listed in tabs along the top. The MM712 has six tabs in total. They are wireless, buttons, performance, lighting, macros, and profiles. The wireless tab contains just two settings. The first is for adjusting the sleep mode, and then the second is for choosing when low power mode is activated. I'd like to have seen the option to be able to turn low power mode off completely as it will limit the MM712's performance and having the option to turn it off would be a welcome addition to the software. And then the buttons tab is where you'll find options for remapping any of the buttons found on the mouse, including the DPI button found on the bottom of the mouse. I'm not really sure why you'd want to change that, but I guess it's better to have the option to change it rather than it being locked down. You're not going to set it to anything really useful because it's on the bottom of the mouse. You're not going to flip the mouse up while you're using it just to press that button. The performance tab is where you'll find checkboxes and sliders relating to DPI, polling rate, angle snapping, lift off distance, and then a few boxes and sliders that will change the Windows mouse settings from within the Cooler Master software. That's a nice little quality of life touch that will save you having to head into the Windows setting screens to change some stuff relating to your mouse performance on your computer. Lighting is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you'll go to change the effects of the RGB lighting on the MM712. The options are pretty slim though, with only static, breathing or cycle available. The lighting does look okay on the mouse. I'd just like to have seen more options to choose from or a few more effects that we can set up and configure. The MM712 has the ability to run macros, which can be recorded and set up on the macros tab within Master Plus. This is pretty much the same as any macro tab that you've ever used. You press start recording, you can add delays, you can add whatever keys you want and then assign it to a button. Then finally, there are five separate profiles which can be set up and automatically saved to the mouse itself. This is great as it allows you to use the mouse however you want without having to run the software in the background all the time. And it's saving automatically is a big plus for me. You, there's no more forgetting to save a profile and then wondering why your mouse is running at a billion DPI when you boot up a game. So my final thoughts on the Cooler Master MM712 lightweight mouse are that it's a very decent option when you take the price into consideration. I found it quite small which might be a big plus for some people, but I personally like a bigger mouse. If you're after a smaller mouse, then it might be worth checking this out. But putting my personal preferences aside, it's built fairly well. It's very lightweight. The battery life is okay. And the performance has been great. I can't knock the performance of this mouse. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's the most amazing mouse that I've ever used because well, it just isn't. But for 60 quid, you could do a lot, lot worse. If you've got smaller hands or use a claw grip, 
then you might want to check this thing out. And that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like down below if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment in the comment section letting us know what you think of this and what mouse you're currently using. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. If you want to check out our brand new merch line, you'll find a link in the description for that. Like this t-shirt, it's pretty cool. You'll find a link in the description for that, as well as links to our Discord server and our Patreon page if you want to support us a little bit further. Anyway, look after yourself, guys. I'll speak to you in the next one. See you later.